Hey YouTube, this is Zach with the Healy's Financial, and today I'm going to be talking about a review of STEM Inc.'s stock Q1 2023 financial performance, aka their earnings call. So if you want to see the actual earnings call itself that is available on the channel, you can see that underneath my other videos, and we did have a preview video as well, so I'll link those in the description as well, in addition to the presentation you'll see here on the screen. Before we dive in deep, I do want to highlight that from an overall perspective, I thought STEM's earnings were great. It wasn't anything spectacular by any means, but the company once again continued to execute in a positive way. This is their Q1 earnings, which does have the smallest or rather the lowest percentage of overall contribution to the overall year-end results. However, I did think that once again, they were in line with expectations even to the high side, and they traditionally have had a strong Q1. It will be interesting to see how they do over the remaining three quarters of this calendar year. But I do think that they answered a lot of outlying questions. They were very clear. And I think the company has continued or rather poised to do very well for the remainder of 2023. That being said, the overall market continues to show signs of weakness. And this is a company that is not slated to be net income positive this calendar year. And as such, they could continue to struggle from an overall market perspective. So with all of that being said, let's dive in. Again, this presentation is going to highlight all of the information. However, they also released their 10Q, so you do have the capability to read that and take a deeper dive into the information that will be presented here. If you'd like to learn more, we also have a Discord linked in the description down below with one of the channels being specific to STEM Inc. Now with our first quarter 2023 results and highlights, I will showcase that strong Q1 momentum. Once again, revenue last year, it was in the 40 millions, up 63% year over year to 67 million. This once again showcases strong growth. However, something that's more important than the revenue number that you see here is the bookings number is once again outpacing that revenue delivery. This is creating or further backing into that contracted backlog number that you see here. Now, what I would highlight is one of the items that did come out in the short report is that their definition of contracted is somewhat easy to get out of. I haven't heard the management team directly address that within any of the conference calls themselves, but I don't believe it's that easy. However, this is something we should continue to watch is recognizing that this is still technically signed but not delivered upon is there could be some risk there, which has happened historically with one or two major projects. That being said, as long as this bookings number is going up, this backlog number is going up, and revenue is going up at a rate that does not outpace those two things, I think it'll continue to show strong growth for the overall company. The contracted annual recurring revenue, $72 million is great. I do like the fact that they are showcasing this in a way. Again, this isn't quite SaaS subscription revenue, but it is showcasing that at a minimum, they don't have to go out and get more business. They will start with $72 million as of 2024. The other thing that I thought was really strong is the gross margins, in particular the gap, not or rather the non-gap gross margin was 19%. That is stronger than it has been historically, and we will talk about that in more depth. The adjusted EBITDA number, which as many of you know, if you've been on the channel for quite some time, I hate when companies report adjusted EBITDA because it's just further showcasing that they don't make any money. But they are reporting it, and I will highlight that it is not as bad as could have been feared. However, their net income of negative $44 million is still somewhat worrisome. I would highlight a decent chunk of that comes from a change in how they are accounting for the also energy acquisition and all in all it's still going to be negative 30 or 35 million so it is still pretty aggressive but all in all once again i'll reiterate strong quarter strong sales growth and they're continuing to execute you can see that down below in the strong commercial momentum that they continue to push strong bookings and that is going to drive this backlog ever higher i want to highlight i'm not going to address every single slide again you can access this presentation in the link down below and be able to see or read at your in-depth. Down below, you can see as far as the business's update, solar is continuing to be a very strong driver of growth. And what they said on the call, and I expect this to continue in the future, is that we're going to continue to see the e-mobility momentum 
and the front of the meter market strength. So this means that they are going to continue to expand into this charging network. I think that's going to be a high dollar or rather a high margin business for them, but it's all pretty much in the pipeline right now. There's not a lot of revenue recognition associated with this, but this is something that will be directly accretive to that car number that they report as well as those gross margins that should help to bulk those up. In addition to that, they highlighted that not just them, but a number of their suppliers, such as Tesla, such as a number of groups over in China, are continuing to get a lot better as the market continues to improve in terms of supply chain or logistics. And as such, that is beneficial to them from a delivery perspective. This is something we'll continue to watch because if there is pressure there, it will continue to hurt their revenue recognition capabilities. Continuing on down below, there is a series of information and the conference call did a great job talking about their technology leadership. I would recommend listening to that component, but I'm primarily going to focus for this call or this YouTube video here on the financial metrics. Once again, very strong growth in the revenue. Adjusted EBITDA actually stayed pretty in line year over year, which is great. But more importantly, you can see those non-GAAP gross margins steadily climbing. Once again, I would highlight that the GAAP gross margins is largely going to see that large drop due to that accounting change. Something that's important to note is they did outsource quite a bit of their new heads, which you can see down below. And I would anticipate that will continue as they continue to outsource the jobs that they can outsource. Down below, backlog going up, car going up. Assets under management for both storage and solar also going up. This is something that I am hopeful that all of these metrics continue to grow. Something that I would highlight and we'll see down below, in fact I'll skip down here, is the expected car for the end of the year is between 80 to 90 million. However, in the first quarter alone, we saw that we went from 65 million to 72 million. So I do have concerns if we don't see another basically $7 million of car added in the second quarter when we are bringing on quite a bit of overall revenue in that time period. So this is the number that I am going to continue to watch. So before we talk about the senior notes, I'll showcase that guidance. Again, this is 19% of full year revenue. They were originally expecting 15%. I would highlight that they did decline to say that they would hit or raise revenue guidance. In fact, when they were asked about that, they said it was quite early to be talking like that. And again, STEM has historically had very strong Q1. We want to see that momentum continue, and I would love if they even ended right in the middle of this guidance and hit $600 million, especially if that adjusted EBITDA, which they say is going to be positive in the second half of this year, it would be great if that came in right in the middle of these two numbers. But again, bookings continues to remain strong. Revenue remains strong. And I'd like to see that car number continue to climb. And if they could get to around $100 million for this, I think that would be massive for the company as a whole. So let's talk about debt. Because this is what initially started the massive slide in the stock itself. Really causing it to crater. I mean, we're down 50% year to date. However, one of the note items that I would note here... And I'll reiterate that listening to their discussion on this on the conference call is beneficial is the note that this added additional cash to the balance sheet. It moved debt from 28 to 2030. So again, pushing out that time frame, it did raise the interest payments associated with that. However, again, pushing that out is beneficial and they were able to essentially buy back quite a bit of that outstanding convertible notes at a pretty deep discount because a lot of that was around $10, $11 a share, which means they were able to buy those back at a discount, meaning that that's pushing out and leaving a smaller percentage chance of additional dilution at a unfavorable rate. So as this continues to go on, this is going to continue to provide better benefits to the company. And from a cash burn perspective, they have quite a bit of cash on hand which is going to allow them to continue to invest in the company. I'm expecting cash burn in theory should be net zero and they should start adding to that cash position by the end of this year, in particular Q4, if we're expecting to hit those above goals. So if we go down below, you can see those key takeaways. But before we dive into that, 
I did want to highlight within the appendix that the financial and operating metrics are going to be available here. That net loss number is the one that they are saying is a little bit higher than it should be due to that accounting change. But at the end of the day, a $45 million loss is still very aggressive when your revenue in that same quarter is $67.4 million. This has got to be better in the second, third, and fourth quarter, and it is what we're going to be watching. The important thing to note is that car number is continuing to climb. Something that's important to note as we go down below, you can see the solar hardware and the services and other revenue available are broken out, whether that is solar or whether that is some of the metrics down below. You can also see those contracted assets under management. So all in all, the company once again continues to perform very, very well. They show strength in a number of different areas, and they did have a beat on revenue while a miss on earnings per share. Overall, I'll reiterate how I started this video. I think STEM had a very strong quarter. I think they're continuing to execute. If they continue to execute throughout this year, I think the stock is going to be positioned in a place to perform very strongly. However, the company's got to have that clear line of profitability and continue to keep that in the forefront of their mind. If they can show net positive in any time period before the end of Q2 of next year, 2024, I think they're going to be poised for incredible growth over the future, in particular the next five to 10 years. So all in all, productive, but still more work to do. We'll continue to talk about this, and if you have thoughts, questions, or feedback, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.